uh, hello everybody and welcome to the five power features of Mystica 10 session. Uh, thank you all for joining us, uh, obviously despite of the difficult situation that we're all currently uh, facing. As you can see, we're all working from home um, and we're trying you know, to do our very best to bring you the most exciting updates of Mystica technology. So in today's session, um, we're planning to introduce you to five super exciting uh, features of Mystica 10. Uh, today pres today's presentation will be carried out by our Mystica expert, Adrian Gonzalez. Um, just a recommendation when we start the pre presentation i would uh, recommend you to put it on full screens um, this is the best way that you can follow the whole presentation um so adrian what are you planning to show us tonight well uh hello everyone uh today we're going to see uh like a full workflow in inside mystica about uh, color grading uh, visual effects combining Mystica Boutique with Mystica Workflow, so that we will see later. So the idea is to go deeper in the new color grading tool set that we have developed in Mystica 10, but, um, but showing uh, more capabilities and more aspects uh, that can be really useful and that are very unique in Mystica and that can uh, improve and optimize and boost uh, the productivity of all the Mystica users. All right, that sounds like a very good plan to me. Um, so at the end of the session, uh, we'll all also dedicate some minutes uh, for the Q&A. So if you have any questions during the session, please place them in the Q&A panel that you can find in the lower part of the Zoom window. Um, when we finish the session, we'll also make the promised prize draft. Um, so we'll be giving away two awesome prizes. Um, one is the one-year license of Mystica Boutique, and the another one is a one-year license, license of the recently announced GVO tools for Mystica. So thank you very much to our friends from Digital Vision uh, for providing this prize for this webinar. Um, all right, so Adrian, as you said, obviously one of the most important new things in Mystica 10 is the, the whole completely redesigned uh, color interface. Um, so can you show us how we can achieve greater control and better results uh, with this new? Sure. So let's go uh, directly to our time and space here. And uh, we're going to start explaining a little bit uh, the new color grading interface. Uh, we did it in uh, the first presentation where we present uh, Mystica 10. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, some of those features again, but now we will explain other ones uh, related with the new color grading toolset. So uh, I'm going to start from the, from the basics by just uh, loading a color grade effect uh, in here. It's important for new people or, or, or those that are seeing Mystica for the first time or they don't have too much experience with, um, with Mystica. Keep in mind that the color grade is only one effect in the whole pool of effects that we have in here. This is going to be important when we talk about the integration between color, color grading and visual effects because you, can, you will see how uh, we can combine all those effects together to get uh, an amazing, amazing results. So in this particular case, I'm just going to load a color grade on top of my clips. And I'm going to use only one shot as a reference to explain my, uh, my color grading uh, tool. So there we have, uh, this is our uh, uh, visual editor. I have my project in here. And I'm going to start with this, uh, with this shot. This is the new color grading tool set that we have developed uh, during uh, this uh, last month uh, for Mystica 10. Uh, as a general approach, uh, what we have, uh, what we wanted to, to achieve was to develop a tool that is much more accessible for a new user, easier to understand, and much more powerful because now it's faster. It's really fast to work with between all the options here. You don't need to navigate in between hidden panels or menus or anything. Everything is uh, very accessible. And you will see how we can use all this uh, stuff to, to get uh, really nice images. So the first thing I'm going to do in here is to uh, to contrast and saturate a little bit my shot uh, in there. Uh, I always start in the same way because I, I need to find some kind of a look a good look in the starting point, even if it's just a pure technical adjustment. So the first thing is I'm going to contrast this because it, it lost uh, low contrast and desaturated. I can contrast like uh, we normally do by changing the lift and the gain and trying to find another point just to go directly to uh, my uh, unique tools in Mystica. I'm going to enable what we call the modes in the trackballs here for the, uh, for the primary panel. 
So we have two, the offset and the contrast. I'm going to enable the contrast just to change the contrast. The great thing of this tool is when I control the lift, it changed the game contrast here. Uh, the idea is to give you that option when you're working with the panel. So in that way, you don't need to move your hands from the trackball, which is at the end, the most important area of work uh, with the panel. So you don't need to find the knob or the control that is um, that is changing the contrast. You can just use it with your with your uh, central trackball. So now if I control, as you can see the leaf in here, I'm just changing the gain over there. Now I'm going to increase the gamma to put uh, my whites in a better point. Let me open the scope so we can see it better. Uh, let me uh, open the negative and the positive values so we have a better uh, look. So I'm going to increase the value there of the gain and the gamma. All right, so uh, let's say, for example, I'm going just to just to show you a quick feature. Uh, let's say that I want to move my whites over there. Okay, I'm going to disable the contrast and now move my whites on top of it. So in that way, I have uh, two areas. I have shadows here that are below the zero value and, and highlights here that are uh, above the 100 value in this case. Um, because I'm using a, a scale from zero to 100. We can just change the scale from here from zero to 1000, like whatever you want. Uh, now I'm going to just uh, increase the saturation. Uh, there we go. All right, so let's say that we have this situation. Now I have a better looking shot. At least it's contrast and it has some color in it because of the saturation control. Now what I want to do is to uh, recover those highlights and those shadows without affecting the rest of my range. So to do that, I'm going to create another layer. And for the highlights here, I'm going to use the soft clip, which is a fourth ball that is really unique in, in Mystica. With the soft clip, I can control the range that is uh, controlled between this pivot here, which is our soft clip pivot, and the whites. So in that way, I can just select which range I want to control with this fourth ball. So in this particular case, I'm going to just to select those highlights and just recover them. And as you can see, I'm just controlling those highlights without affecting anything else in my, uh, in my range, which is pretty great. To, to control the image and to stay always in, in, in the values. Uh, this can be, uh, this can be really useful as well when you're working with HDR and you're working at 1000 nits, you have a different level for whites. If you have a 2000 nits, your whites level is different as well. So you can just put your level wherever you want and just recover those highlights in a very nice way. We're going to do the same thing with the shadows here, but using a, a really unique tool as well here in Mystica that we call it uh, Nisoft, is this toggle here. I need to create a new uh, layer to activate it. And the great thing of the Nisoft is that it changed basically the behavior of the trackball. So instead of uh, working in leaf gum gain like a in a traditional way, uh, in a traditional primary way, basically what it does is to fix the range following these pivots. So for example, if I load the white point in here, you see that we have values that are above uh, the white level. If I change the gamma, you will see that whites are kept intact, but I can change the gamma without rotating the curve around these pivots here, which is really nice when I want to control or keep some areas of my shot intact. So with this, uh, with this setting in mind, I'm going to transform that tool and instead of using it for the highlights, I'm going to use it, uh, use it for the shadows. So I'm going to just lower my uh, soft clip lower my white control and then with the lift I can just recover them in a pretty nice way without affecting the rest of the shot. So in that way I can control the luminance in a really really nice uh, way. Right? So uh, this transition between the shadows and the rest of my range, uh, mid-tones and highlights can be a bit hard so I can just increase the value of the knee soft and now we have some softness over there. So as you can see, this new graphic was developed for the Mystica 10 and is really, really useful to understand what is happening with your image. Sometimes we, we normally follow the scope to, do, to understand what is happening with our image, but sometimes it's a bit tricky to understand uh, the behavior of the pivots because it's not so obvious with a scope. You need this kind of RGB curves in here that, for example, if I change the gamma, you'll see how, see how they are just uh, divided into and into create in another layer so you can see it clearly. Uh, there you go. So in this, you can see how amount of red or green or blue are we applying to the image. So it's really easy to understand what we are doing with our, 
with our shot, which is uh, really nice. All right, I'm going to remove this uh, with um, this layer because we don't need it. So now uh, I like this uh, this exposition for my shot. Uh, the saturation I think is fine for now, but it looks like very greenish. I would like to give uh, to the shot a more sunset feeling. So what I'm going to do is to create another layer, go to bands, and in bands we have several options. We're going to focus in this panel here that we have as well created for this new version. Uh, basically, in here you can control the hue, saturation and contrast for the black, mid-tones, white and all. Uh, it, this was in the previous version, but it was like uh, with like these buttons over here. So it's the same functionality, but uh, again, uh, we have put it in a more nicer way, in a more visual way, so you can see it and control it in a, in a much better way at the end. So in this particular case, what I'm going to do is just starting by changing the hue of my uh, shot. And I see, okay, I'm changing quite a lot of things. So instead of maybe move it just a little bit to here, there you go. And I want to recover maybe this blue that now has turned a little bit uh, cyan in this case. So I can go to my fixed vectors, take my blue in here, and I can just move it and change it to something more bluish, something like that. There we go, and increase maybe the saturation. So again, as you can see, everything is very visual, it's very easy to control. All the tools are, uh, are accessible with just a couple of clicks. Now let's go to the curve panel. And in this panel, this, this has been redesigned uh, in a great way because it's not the fact that you only have now, uh, that you have now uh, the RGB uh, curving here, the saturation or the hue. Uh, curves, all of them visible in the same panel, which allows you to, in a very quick way, to understand what you are doing, is now the fact that you can open the curve in a, a floating window that you can just put wherever you want and you can uh, resize at the size that you want, which gives you quite a lot control when you want to grade using curves. In this particular case, I'm going just to use it to create the traditional S curve to create some contrast and increase those highlights. There you go. Okay, so as a final step, I'm going to just maybe to increase a little bit more the, uh, the saturation of my shot by going to here and maybe in primary just increase the saturation a little bit. There you go. All right, so we have made uh, this kind of a quick uh, grading and we are going to apply this grading to the rest of my shots. Uh, really simple. I can just go in. I can just go shot by shot by just double clicking, and there we go. Now we have applied that shot, or we can, for example, previsualize the result of my shot by keeping press. So I'm previsualizing, but if I drop, I if I release the 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 button, it will recover the previous situation. So if I press again, I can previsualize. If I make a gesture up, then it will be applied. So everything is like a very accessible with just uh, with the pen or the mouse, etc. If we want to apply it in all my shots, I can just take one color grade, remove the other one, select all of them, Control V, and that's it. Um, I'm doing this in the time and space because I want to highlight the fact that time and space is really important in Mystica when it comes to manage your shots, your gradings, your visual effects, etc. Is not it has more presence than in other solutions where the timeline maybe is only restricted to the conforming area, the editing area. In this case, it's an infinite canvas where you uh, can manage everything. So you will you will see in this presentation how I, how I come back to the time space quite a lot of times to move things from one side to another, copy, paste, etc. because it's at the end the faster way. And the great thing is I can just copy, paste and propagate in my whole timeline to have my uh, my full project graded in a really fast way instead of using uh, the visual editor for that, which at the end with the storyboard, you are more limited at, at that point. So this has been a, like a quick uh, overview about the, um, the color grading, but we're going to see more details in, in, in the next steps. Yeah, sure. I mean, this is really, really cool. I really like, you know, how this all little uh, things can really make you work faster. So. Uh, that was pretty cool. Thank you so much. Um, so, you know, another great thing about Mystica, as you mentioned at the beginning, is also combining uh, VFX and color. So why don't you show us a little bit more in this di direction? 
Sure. So yeah, this part is really interesting. Uh, when we normally talk about uh, color grading and visual effects in Mystica, we start directly from here, from the time and space, combining visual effects and color grading in the same, uh, in the same timeline. Uh, but there is something that is really important that we normally don't mention, um, uh, which is basically the management of those visual effects shots. And how can we manage the, uh, those shots in our Mystica project? Uh, just to give a quick overview of what a Mystica project is for, for the new users or, or, or for people that is now uh, interested in Mystica, if we go to my media folder here, I have a project that is called uh, Boutique Presentation. And a project basically is a folder with uh, several subfolders where I, where I have my media organized uh, in, yeah, in several folders here. And inside all those folders I have, uh, sorry, this one is empty because it's the one that I'm going to use now. Uh, and inside uh, these folders I have LNKs, which are basically links that are pointing to the uh, real media where, uh, where is a, a story in our storage. Uh, if I leave, for example, the mouse or the pen, I get all that metadata uh, from the clip just to know uh, all those details from, from the clip. Now, what happened, for example, uh, because normally projects are not, when you are starting Mystica, normally you don't get all the media. You, you have some media and then on, on different days you get more, more shots, especially when you're working with visual effects, you're getting shots all the time over and over again. Uh, or new versions of those shots, or um, you have to implement them and, and bring them to your time and space. So how can we do that? So to manage that, we're going to use Mystica Workflows to show uh, how can Mystica Boutique can be integrated to meet with Mystica Workflows to optimize that workflow. So let me go to Mystica Workflows here, and I'm going to build a really simple workflow, but that can be really useful for us. So the first thing I'm going to do is to define a watch folder. There you go. And in this watch folder, is the folder that I'm going to use as, a, as an active folder, as an active uh, folder that is always listening. So every time that I put something in that folder, it will start the workflow that I'm going to build, which basically is to create Mystica LNKs. So what I'm going to do is every time that I put a visual effect shot or any shot in here, it will create automatically a link to that media and put that link in my project folder. So as an operator, I don't need to find that shot in my storage or try to organize it manually. Everything will be done automatically uh, by Mystica Workflows. So how can we do that? Let's go to my media folder in here as an example. And I have two shots. One is the visual effects department. Let's say that uh, in here, uh, the people is uh, creating their visual effects shots, etc. And I have the visual effects shot, which is like the delivery folder for those uh, visual effects shots. So what I'm going to do is just to drag and drop that visual effects shot folder in the watch fo in the watch uh, in the watcher here, and in the Mystica LNK, what I'm going to do is instead of leaving the default folder, I'm going to go to my project folder here, and inside my project folder, I've created manually a visual effects shot that right now is empty, of course. So what I'm going to do is just to put it in here. So again, uh, to summarizing what what we are doing. Basically, every time that I put something in the defined uh, visual effects shots of, of my watcher, it will create those links automatically and put those links in my project folder. So I don't need again to find uh, those shots in my storage. From here, we can even uh, uh, add more options. For example, I'm not going to use those options in this presentation, but we can, for example, uh, put a Slack note to let me know when, as when, a, when a clip is, uh, is created and is and a new version of, of a VFX shot is is created. It will it will be uh, it will let me know that I need to to review and take that shot and implement it in my time space with a message. Or I can use, for example, a simple email to do that. So I can just put my email note and this will send me an email every time that a new shot lands in this watch folder here. Again, I don't, I'm not going to use those, uh, those notes for this presentation because I want to focus more on Boutique. But uh, we, had, uh, we have a, a presentation of Mystica Workflows in where uh, we talk about uh, these kind of features. All right, so pretty simple uh, workflow that I'm going to add to my queue. So in that way, I have this workflow running and always listening. So what I'm going to do in a very quick way is to go to my VFX department, for example, take all those shots that are the visual effects shots that we are going to use, and let's say that our compositor just put them in my VFX shot that is uh, my watch folder. 
So this will start uh, my, my workflow here. There you go, now it's creating the links. Uh, there is one specific shot that is a bit heavy. That's what, that for that reason, it will take a few seconds. But this basically will create those shots automatically in this visual effects shot folder here. If we open it and refresh it, now it's uh, thinking, there you go. Now there are three, uh, there, was, uh, there are four shots. The, the fourth one is the heavy one. So once it finished, I will have all my shots in my project. Again, I don't need to find anything in my, uh, in my storage, which uh, helps me quite a lot uh, when it comes to manage uh, these kind of visual effects shots. Let's see if the fourth one is there. Not yet. Yeah, it's processing. Yeah, it's because uh, we have one that is uh, really, really heavy, but never mind. Let me, okay. All right, so now, uh, now uh, is the moment to see, okay, how can we bring those shots? Because if, if, if the uh, visual effects department send me only one shot, I can just put it manually wherever I want. But when I have several of them, maybe the visual effects uh, department is sending me uh, an EDL or a conform file to, to get those shots in the, in the right position. So I have, in fact, an EDL file, which is this EDL that they can send me by email or just use another watch folder to copy it to my project, whatever. And in this particular case, I'm going just to drop, drag and drop over there. We have this option here, the EDL conform, continue, get from list, and I'm going to point directly to my new VFX shots that I have in my project. So I'm going to click in perform. And now there we go. All my shots have been put below my timeline here and I have all of them connected to the right position in my timeline. So it's really simple to, to manage. I'm, I'm just using basically the, the, the editing reference, which is this one, and I'm just putting those shots in the right position of my, of my timeline. So for example, in this particular case, I can just switch between the different modes. There we go. So this is like the, the first shot that I get, and this is the new one with the spaceship. This is the, the new VFX uh, shot. Um, same thing here, for example, we have this one with uh, which is already graded, but I get a new shot that has this kind of, I don't know if you can see it. Well, we have, you have, this has some kind of shine or glowing from the sun. So how can we just manage and replace? Again, using the time space is, is really nice. I can just drag and replace, that's it. It's really, really simple. So there you go. Now I have that, that option. I can control the color from there. Managing shots is really simple when, when you have all organized in your, in your project. Now let's say that, for example, I get another version of one specific shot. So I can just copy this new version. So I'm going to copy it and just, uh, sorry, I'm going to cut, but to go faster. So I'm going to cut and just place it in my spaces shot is the one. I have a version one, so now I have version two. And Mystica Workflows, of course, is listening. And again, it's going to create a new link to that shot. So once it finished, I will have that shot in my media. Go to the effect shots, going to refresh. And there we go. Now we have the second shot over there. So I can just uh, go to here and just bring it to my timeline. This is only one shot, so I can just use it, put it in manually. So now I have the three versions of these shots in here. One with the, let me show you the difference. What the difference was like the space is, is like making some kind of occlusion over the sky over here. And the third version now, this occlusion is solved. So this is like, let's say that this is like my final visual effect shots that is ready to, uh, for grading. And again, it's the great thing of this time space is that it's really visual. I have all the shots in here. I can just check in just one view uh, uh, all my visual effects shots. All right, so now let's talk about integration between grading and visual effects now that we have those shots uh, in here. Um, when we talk about integration between color grading and visual effects, I always recommend to use EXR, which is transforming every day, is transforming to a standard when we uh, talk about uh, visual effects. We have shown in previous demonstration these shots. Let me load it, and I'm, going, I'm not going to go into too much detail because, again, uh, we have talked about it in other in other presentations. Uh, let me. This is an EXR multi-layer file, and the great thing of the EXR multi-layer files is that in just one file, I have multiple layers of information that can be really useful for grading. 
So for example, in this particular case, I'm going to use a layer group to extract all those layers. I'm going to select the RGB layer, so we have it in here. This CGI, so if you have a project with uh, CGI media or commercials that use uh, CG shots, etc., or CG effects, this uh, tool can be really, really useful. Because now we have this, uh, this shot, I can, this in linear light aces, I can just transform it. Let's put a quick unicolor just to transform from linear to gamma 2.4, for example. There we go. And now we can use a color grade to make my, my grading. So I'm going to just to create uh, like a quick grading just to show, oops, this is in uh, contrast, no, in offset. Uh, there we go, just to neutralize a little bit the color, this yellow color. Now the great thing is, as I said, uh, we have like uh, multiple layers of information that can we use for our grading. And one um, fantastic thing of this new color tool set is those layers are integrated in the proper interface. We don't need to navigate, we don't need to make complex compositing stuff to get uh, all the options and, and all the possibilities of, the, of those layers. So for example, if I create another layer, I can go to my qualifier and go to the multi-layer. And in here, for example, I can go to depth and I can select the creature depth, for example. I'm going to put in this play key and I can select based on depth my creature. So let's create a quick selection. There you go. So now I can make any adjustment over this creature without affecting, see, the rest of my shot. So, for example, do something like this. Um, now I can even relight my shot by uh, going to my directional light and select uh, my normal maps in here, enable again, and as you can see, now we have a full control of the direction of the light of my shot, which allows me again to um, to make some grading based on that information, right? But we understand that at the end, this is like very specific because you need to work with CGI. We need to, to work in a very specific context. It's not very general. So what if we use the same tools with a live footage shot? Uh, so for that, I have this shot over here, which is uh, this one. I'm going to, just to, to keep things simple, I'm going to just to hide uh, this one, okay? And just move it uh, down. So we always, so we only focus on that one. Uh, for some reason, there is some uh, framing here that is um, that doesn't exist. So I'm going to just remove it and just put it there. All right. So this shot has been created in a comp in a in a, an effects in a compositing tool set in a compositing suite. And the great thing is the compositor has a packet in just one EXR file the RGB layer with other layers that can be useful for me. And this is a general recommendation. If a compositor is working in a shot and is making multiple lay, uh, mask selections, etc., for the compositing, is is really uh, is really interesting to save those selections to use them later in grading. Even if the main goal of those selections was for compositing, they can be really useful in grading. So in this particular case, I'm the comp I'm the colorist, and I'm saying the Compositor, okay, save me all the shapes and all the masks and everything you are doing with your shots because I can use them in grading. So first thing I'm going to do is the same philosophy. Go to my layer root and extract the RGB layer, which is this one. Uh, this is again in linear, so I'm going to use a unicolor for transform from linear again to gamma 2.4 or whatever we want. Let's put gamma 2.4, all right? And from here, let me do this smaller. I'm going to remove the solids that are filling the extra space. From here, what I'm going to do is to add a color grade mode on top of it. And I'm going to start like I normally start with any shot. by contrast this a little bit. And maybe saturate my shot. Something like that. I'm going to do the same thing that I did with previous uh, shots, which was like uh, changing a little bit the hue. I don't like that kind of greenish looking, so I'm going to move it to something that looks more like a sunset or something like that. There you go. Okay, so I have, uh, let's say that I have uh, this situation. All right, so now I can use the same tools that I've used with my CG, but in here, especially the depth map. I can go to my qualifier, go to my depth, and now I have here a depth map layer. This depth map layer was created uh, in a compositing suite again, and if I enable the highlight, the the highlight here, I can just control 
Let's put this as my first step and then extend. And this is my 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 death map. It's not the best death death map, uh, but that's that's okay. I mean, I'm making grading, so I don't need that kind of level of accuracy that a compositor needs when it uh, comes from selections and this kind of stuff. Blur at the end, the blur is my friend as a colorist, so I can use it in this particular case to get a better results with a very simple death map that can be generated in just a few minutes, which is great. So for example, in this particular case, I want to grade the parts that are far from the camera. I'm going to invert my selection. There you go. And now, what is uh, really useful is that I can combine this selection, for example, with my hue saturation and luma controls in here, for example. So I can just control them based on luminance. So I'm basically recovering those details based on luminance, but keeping the, the information of the depth map, like is this case. You can just go to the multi-layer to maybe change a little bit and not select, sorry. Ah, there you go. All right. So I can just contrast this selection as well by just using my contrast controlling here all right and now add a little bit of blur and the great thing is now if i go to my primary i can just control for example the gain on those parts increase it maybe and now if we mute this we see that it's affecting everything but not this guy in the foreground because he's not selected by the death map so that's really nice because at the end i can just select which areas wants to control uh, using um, using this this uh, this layer. Now I can go farther than that, and I'm going to create another layer. But before that, what I'm going to do is to duplicate this particular shot, and I'm going to like to use uh, this uh, shot in here as a reference for masks because the compositor as well has been really nice, and he has just give me masks for different parts of my shot. So for example. Mask 1, this is the red one. Mask 2 is going to be this guy over here. And the 3 is going to be this guy in the background. And, well, it's a quick selection of my um, my characters in my, in my shot. As we can see, we have some hard edges, for example, here in the second one. But that's nice. I can just go in to and add a, a blur over here. I'm going just to move down. And with a blur, I can just, for example, blur only the green layer, and there you go. Again, blur is my friend as a colorist, so I, I want all my shapes a little bit blur. Now I'm going to use those selections by extending my color grade to select the part that I want. So for example, in this case, I'm going to select this guy in the middle. I'm going to, in this third layer that I've created, I'm going to merge key, input two, and it's going to be the green channel. So now, there we go, we have this selection here. And again, I can combine this selection with the high, the hue saturation and luma control. So I can just enable this mode, maybe blur again my selection, and I can just go, for example, to my um, bands and make a very quick uh, change in color here. So something like that, right? And the problem is, at this point, which uh, again, you see the capabilities on, on the, um, of this system, is that there is some points here that, of course, there is a, an occlusion between this guy in front and this guy in the background. So I can create another layer, go to my qualifier, and I'm going to merge key, the second input again, because I, again, uh, remember that I'm using as a secondary input this shot, and then take the red one. So in this particular case, I'm selecting this guy over here, and with this selection, I can recover the information that I had in previous uh, layers. And here I'm recovering the one that I have in the vector one. I'm going to recover the one that I had in vector two. Uh, so vector two, there we go. Just in case I've made some changes that affects that part of the image, which I don't think so, but, but just to be sure. So now my selection is not being affected because I'm recovering that part. And I can combine that map with this kind of selection by creating another layer. Go to my qualifier. Again, I'm going to select based on depth my shot. I'm going to do the same thing that I did. Just selecting this. There. And let's say that we want to do the same thing that we have done in, in the other, uh, in the other, in the vector two by uh, like changing the background uh, based on depth. But we don't want to include this guy that is in the middle here. 
I want to exclude it of my selection. So I can do that by just, again, add the inverted input to of the green of my second input. So in that way, I'm just uh, extracting this guy. I'm going to focus. Okay. So now I'm going to isolate this first guy and the second one here. I'm going to blur this again. So now I can, again, combine it with the luminance if I want, like we did in the previous shot, and then come back to primary. And if I make any change in here, like something like that. So for example, let's move it to something more bluish or something like that. This will affect only that part of the shot without affecting these two characters here in my shot. So I have full flexibility of my shot using these tools. And as you can see, all basically the most complex thing that I've done is just selecting the layers that I want in my RGB channels to use them later in the color grid. It's quite simple. Uh, even if you see it like that at the end, you can always group this and just keep it your timeline simple. But uh, as you can see, the flexibilities are huge. So this is uh, a demonstration of how visual effects can be combined with color grading. Wow, I mean, this is, I think this is one of my favorites, uh, you know. Um, I really liked how you showed this whole EXR multilayer also on the real shot, not only on, on the CG as we're used to. So I think that, you know, the, the possibilities of implementation are endless. So uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's super cool. Um, so another big news that we recently made um, are the newly integrated DVO tools for Mystica. Um, that obviously opens another whole new world of you know, creative possibilities. So um, can you show us a little bit uh, how these work in Mystica? Sure. sure. Um, I'm going to, to make, make a, a quick, quick overview about those, those uh, tools in here. here. So, so basically, basically uh, in Mystica, Mystica, we don't, we, we, we don't only have, have these, um, our, our native, native tools, tools here. here. We, support we support any open, open effects, effects uh, here. here. In this, in this particular, particular case, case, we're going to talk about, about the new uh, digital vision uh, tool, tool set. And, and how can we integrate these tools, tools with, with, uh, with our tools? tools. And, and it's really, really simple at the end. We can just, for example, use the sharpen. I'm going to use the sharpen as an example. Open, open it in here, here to see the thumbnails, thumbnails. And, and I'm going to put my sharpen, sharpen here. here. And in fact, I, well, well, I, I will use, use a sharpen in just one shot. I can just provide it later. So, so the sharpen basically works like a normal effect in my time space. So I can, I can just go to here. And, and automatically, automatically making the, uh, my sharpen is really, really simple. Uh, I'm going to increase the value so you can see better the results. And maybe let me find a uh, uh, frame, frame where it's more visual, visual. there you go. So, so if, if I, I enable it, or disable, disable it, we can see how, how we are applying the sharpen. And, and this is sharpen, for example, is really nice because, because it keeps, keeps all, all the texture of my image without, without creating uh, any, any artifacts or any issues uh, with it. Of, of course, I'm, uh, um, I'm, I'm exaggerating the value here because, because the streaming, so we can see the result. But we can play with it and get really nice results. Now, now, there is uh, another uh, effect that, that I, I, can I can bring, bring for example, to my project here, which is the re grain, which works really, 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 really nice, nice. Which, which I can, I can just open it there, there re -grain, and, and this, this will add grain automatically, automatically in my shot in a very quick way. So, so again, again manage, and manage, and manage, managing these, these, these uh, clips, clips is really, really simple. simple. I can just take, for example, this stack, copy, for example, here. I can, I can just, just take, take uh, this, this part, part of the shot. shot. Let's, Let's take, take this, this for example. example. And, and I'm going to use the matte paste, but, but without any option. So in, so in that way, way I, will I will apply everything. There we go. So, so everything, everything has been applied to my, to my timeline. Let me, Let me organize, organize everything so we have all, all in the same, same uh, at the same level. I just, just apply it in, the, um, in these shots, shots because, because are, those, those are the ones that I touch. Those ones are not touched by, 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 by these adjustments. So uh, now I have all the all my effects and all my plugins applied, and I can even create a um, I can even create a display filters to use later in in Mystica workflows. What is a display filter? Let's say that in my case I want to apply a sharpen to all my shots and the same grain to all my shots. And this can increase the render times. This can um, decrease the performance of my of my time space because I'm I'm mixing quite a lot of things in here. So I can define, for example, a display filter. Call it a 
sharpen angry grain and and this will create a display filter which is just a pure metadata file that contains all that information that I had that I had in here and I can just uh, move it to Mistia workflows create a new workflow and if I put any transcoder here I can just apply that transcoder the uh, sharpen and regrain to anything that for example lands in a watch folder so I can just copy paste all the media that I want in there and that same effect will be applied to all those shots in batch without uh, stopping the production of uh, Mystica Boutique in here. Oh wow, yeah, that um, that really can save you a lot of time uh, when you're, you know, on a tight deadline. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, so, you know, the greatest news that for you guys that you're attending our webinar is that um, you can try these DBO tools completely free of charge. You can just download Mystica Boutique uh, evaluation version from our website and um, you'll get a 30 day free license of DBO tools as well. So you can, you can see it for yourself how it works. So uh, the same goes for, for Mystica workflows. Uh, obviously you have the free evaluation version on the website available. Um, so I saw that when you're working with the DBOs, you applied a very, um, very nice uh, operation, the match and paste. So uh, maybe you can explain us a little bit more how we can use it. Sure, this is a link with uh, the versioning uh, or when I, we have like multiple versions of my same project. I have here in this uh, case a small uh, project. Uh, this one is like a small version of, of the same project that I have in here. And what I'm going to do is, how can I adapt all the work that I've done in there in here? Well, using the match and paste function. So I can just take all of it, copy, take my target uh, cut, match and paste. And in this case, I can just select uh, which parameters I'm going to use for the, for, the, for the match. So I'm going to use, for example, time rates and real name. And what I want to do with the effects, I want to put them on top or replace. In this case, I don't have any effect in here, so I don't want to replace anything, but I'm going to leave it there because it will put the effects on top. And what happened with the keyframes is I want to uh, ignore the keyframes or keep the original keyframes or scale the keyframes to the new duration. Again, I don't have any keyframes in this project, so I don't care too much about it, just paste. And there we go. Now we have here all my projects has all, all the shots that are in my uh, in my clip has been adapted. If for any reason, for example, this one has been uh, displaced there, I can just uh, take in again, just select that shot. Sometimes if the compositing is is a bit complex, it can happen. Um, uh, okay, let me select it again. Copy. And which one is oh, this one? That's a paste. Time code range. Our key friends, it's better on top. Oh, he's not leaving it. I have to check that. But yeah, I normally when you when when you uh, in this particular case is because I'm that combining like different uh, levels of media, etc. That that can uh, make it a bit uh, complicated. Uh, it's only in few shots, and in the rest of the shots, this one is not does that doesn't have anything basically because this shot is not in my original timeline. So this is a quick way to see, okay, this shot is new. I don't have anything from this. Well, that's fine. I can just uh, copy and just paste it. And there you go. Now it's everything adapted. Uh, same thing, for example, with this one that has a complex uh, situation, I can just take it, duplicate it, move it. Is what I told you guys about the fact that I can just um, move things between shots and change them in a very manual way and that's it. Now everything is adapted. So moving things from one side to another using the time space is really, really fast. And using the match and paste has speed up all the process quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, uh, that really is uh, a very cool feature of, of Mystica indeed. So um, let's say that now you have all your work done and um, obviously your client wants several different versions. So can you show us how you would manage those in Mystica? Sure, and in Mystica there is always uh, several ways to do the same stuff. So for example, if, if my customer wants uh, different versions of just one shot, the easiest way to do it, uh, let me remove the grain and sharpen, I'm going just to hide it. Uh, so for example, if I go to this shot over here, a uh, quick way to do it is by using uh, the storyboard directly. So for example, I have this shot in there. I'm going to create, a, well, I'm going to save this 
this current configuration as a version one, if I create another layer and change, for example, the hue, the overall hue of my shot, so something like that, I can create a version two, and then I'm going to maybe leave, increase the leaf, the gamma, and the gain, and just change maybe the color to something more like that, and I have a version three. So I can just navigate through versions using my keyboard or my panel, so in a really fast way, I can just switch between all the versions and options and, and, and compare the results uh, uh, that my customer is asking for uh, with the one that, uh, that I did. Now, let's say that the adjustment that my customer requires, uh, requires is, um, is an overall change for all my shots or for many shots. One thing that I can just do is just create a new layer. I'm going to call it this, uh, create another color grid. And I'm going to rename this grade and call it um, client grade. And I can just extend it to all my shots, for example, like that, that way. And I can just take everything and use uh, the macro that I have, sorry, uh, the macro that I have, uh, which is called split conform. Let me put it in place. All right. So edit macros split conform so in that way now all my shots have the same uh the same grade over there and i can just change any parameter let's let's do something uh quick like changing this maybe to more bluish uh, uh hue and i can just take this change and say okay propagate in the current layer so now i can just propagate that to all my customer uh my clients great so from here i can just say okay i want to check the result without the client's grading here, I can just hide it or bypass it if I want. I have uh, two options. I can just uh, disable to bypass or I can just hide, reveal, uh, or I can hide mine and leave the one from the customer. So I have many, many options. And in here, I want to give you like a small tip, uh, which is not necessarily, um, you don't need to apply it every, uh, every, um, every, uh, every time but it can be useful in some situation, which is the fact that you can use links. So for example, in this case, I have the node graph here, I can just duplicate this link. This will create a new, a new uh, effect on here that I can just point and say, okay, let me move this down so we can see it better. And this one as well, this one as well. So now I have these, all my stacks and this link basically is pointing to those directions. So I can, to, to this uh, shot in here. So what I can do is just take that link, for example, and paste it to all my shots, move it up. And now this is one, two, three. So I'm going to put value three and just propagate. Now, if I put a color grade on top of it, there you go, we are, put, uh, we are uh, pointing to this effect. Now they're, they're regrain, but if I go one, value more, now I'm putting to the sharpen. If I go one more, it's to the client's grade. If I put one more, it's my grading. And if I put one more, is the source. So I can just move really quick between all the steps in my timeline and applying overall everything, any adjustment that I want. So because basically this works like a bridge between the version that I have and the new version that I'm building. And I can just create that over and over again by duplicating, create new links. So everything is connected between it to have like multiple versions of the same of the same timeline. So this is an example of how versioning can be done in Mystica. It's only my personal approach. There are always several uh, different approaches, but this can be interesting in some situations.